everybody. All right, so it's truth universally acknowledged that every mathematical proof should start off with a fact of nature. And if there's one fact of nature that I am very certain about right now, it's that I am unbelievably nervous. I mean, there are so many of you guys out there. And it might be because there are a lot of you staring directly at me. Or it might also be because I'm ambitiously going to endeavor upon sharing with you my greatest weakness in life. So my greatest weakness in life also happens to be my greatest strength. And don't get too impressed. It's just because I have given up all hope of ever being able to change it about myself and being the Duke networky that we're kind of taught to be. I've had to market it as a strength. But I'll stop beating around the bush. The greatest weakness I have in life is that I am cripplingly addicted to stories. That's right. Ever since I was a kid, I absolutely adored reading books, consuming movies, and television, because when life got too hard, I could disappear behind the face of a character where I didn't have to face all my many faults, or I could disappear into a fantastical narrative where reality could just kind of dissolve around me. And for a while, I used to think I was the only person that did this that it was just something innately wrong with me. But when I got to Duke and I started talking to other individuals about their experiences and their motivations, it began to make me wonder, maybe I'm not the only person who has this aspect of my personality. In particular, you know, I saw this quote on the, uh, on the wall in Perkins Library, and it's a Reynolds Price quote from his book, A Palpable God, that says, a need to tell and hear stories is, a, uh, is essential to the species Homo sapiens, second in necessity apparently after nourishment and before love and shelter. And this is what started to get me thinking that, yeah, maybe there is a real need for us to hear and learn through allegory, to learn through story. So, I came to Duke initially to become a math major, which might sound almost completely contradictory to exactly what I'm telling you. But truth be told, you know, most of my life I've specialized primarily in STEM. And I love it just as much as I love these stories as well, too. But, you know, I came to Duke thinking, I want to become a great mathematician, and the way you become the best math student is to only do math, right? It didn't go super well. I got to about sophomore year, beginning maybe say October, before the inside of my brain was screaming to do something just innately creative and artistic in expression. And so two of my other friends and I sat down to um, eat dinner at West Union, and we found that we had a shared love for classic adventure novels, which traditionally fall into a particular genre of literature that's not really well known. You might know the movie title named after it, but it's Pulp Fiction. Pulp fiction is an early genre of fiction created in the early 1900s um, that primarily focuses on the concept of escapism. It's called pulp fiction because the books were produced on the cheapest paper available, wood pulp, so that they could easily be sold to anyone who was willing to buy them for just dimes and pennies. And this way, factory workers could grab a Pulp Fiction novel on their way to work, uh, dive into it during their lunch break in their off hours, and then easily pick up another one, disappearing kind of from the mundanity of daily life. And so when we started talking about this, the idea of delving deeper into the human need to escape from reality was something I wanted to investigate even more. So my friends and I, we created a group called Freshly Squeezed Pulp on campus, which is Duke's premier and first ever vintage audio drama group. We produced podcasts in the style of old time radio, and we modernized traditional works of pulp fiction. Key word there, modernization. Because classic pulp fiction was created for escapism, but it was escapism for the every man of the early 1900s. And truth be told, we're not an everyman society. So we have to create diverse characters with many different multifaceted personalities in order to allow so many different people in the diversity of today's world to experience that same escapism. So we've been able to do so many incredible things. And as current president right now, I'm so unbelievably proud of the team that I'm working with. 
Not only are we currently endeavoring upon creating two seasons, um, we've previously done a one-off, and our 2019-2020 season, The Adventures of Tarzan, is in talks to be licensed by the author's original estate, Edgar Rice Burroughs Incorporated. It's been a fantastic experience of not only learning what, you know, us as the younger generation want to see from diverse media, but how we can work with an older generation, too, that covets this, you know, treasure trove of literature. How can we span this generational gap? And so in this process, you know, most of my days would be spent writing tons and tons of narratives while also equally creating mathematical models. I'm now a mathematically applied strategy program two major, which essentially means that I create mathematical models to understand the human decision-making process using the fields of game theory, uh, evolutionary anthropology, decision science, you name it. And so perhaps it was the fact that I had spread myself too thin and I was ridiculously tired that kind of the line between these two fields began to blur. But I really had to step back and ask myself, why am I studying mathematical modeling when I love writing so much? And to that I answered, well, I want to learn about the world. I want to learn about it through simulation and allegory. And, and allegory was that key word. It suddenly helped me realize that the same way that I loved escaping into novels and telling novels to learn about the world was the exact same reason why I was creating math models as well, too so that I could understand how to make decisions without the risks of having to make them in real life. And once I kind of realized this intersection, I didn't want to go back. I loved getting to span both of these worlds equally. I mean, no matter how completely separate they are. But I'm not going to stand up here today and say that that's easy to do. Unfortunately, here at Duke and in academia, we're kind of you know, asked to corral ourselves into a particular box with a label. Society wants us to be specialists, but truth be told, and you know, sue me if I'm wrong, I want to be a generalist for me. I want to live loving the parallels between two completely different fields, and, and I want to see the many different intersections for me, not because I'm some person that's marketable. And so, you know, once I realized this, I've kind of joined this sort of rallying cry for generalism to come back, for let's bring back the Renaissance, man. Let's bring back the Renaissance everyone. Because at the end of the day, you know, let's live for us. Let's not live for somebody else. So, you know, living between these two separate worlds, having these many different parallels, there's one that kind of reminds me of how I choose to deal with escapism that I want to leave you with today. Because, you know, if there's one thing I've learned from telling stories, it's that they're so unbelievably hard to tell. And if there's one thing I've learned from math modeling, it's that it too is incredibly difficult. But that difficulty reminds me that no matter how obsessed you are with a favorite character, no matter how much you love a fictional persona, you are more complex, wonderful, and amazing than any character anyone could ever possibly write. And the world around you is so much more mysterious and chaotic and unpredictable and adventurous than any novel or math model anyone could possibly create. So I ask you to turn away from the screen, to look up from the data, to look up from the page, and embrace the chaos of daily life and the complexity of you yourself as a person. Because after all, I'm not up here telling you about some modernized Pulp Fiction story or presenting some kind of math model. I'm here telling my story, and I implore you to go find and tell yours. Thank you. Thank you.